black axe is synonymous with cybercrime. It's spread around the world. They've claimed to have as many as 30,000 members globally. Uh, how much were they trying to get out of you? Like 96,000 and saying that I was going to go to jail? The various law enforcement agencies operating out of various countries globally have a huge problem tackling transnational organized crime. In October 2021, eight men were arrested in Cape Town on serious fraud charges. It was quite a coup following a protracted international investigation involving Interpol and the FBI, as well as an elite squad of South African police. The men were allegedly members of the Black Axe, a notorious Nigerian organized crime group. But their targets hadn't been major financial institutions or even local businesses. Instead, their frauds came wrapped up in romance, literally, in that the gang's entire operation revolved around defrauding lonely singletons around the world of their life savings. What I lost with him was probably well over 500,000. It was humiliating, very humiliating. The method was simple create a fake dating profile for a fictitious Prince Charming, find a divorcee or widow, or just someone naive enough to fall for it, and strike up a fictitious relationship. They're going for loneliness and they're targeting people's need for companionship. They're using keyword searches on, on platforms like Facebook. It's, it's very easy. Once embedded, the stories would start. They needed money for a pressing debt to operation, or even to release an inheritance. Who wouldn't want to help their partner in need? Of course, they'd never met in real life. It's around deception, it's around cheating, and it's around choosing those things in order to gain a financial advantage. It's efficient, it's, it's effective, and at the end of the day, fraud is all about money. The gang is accused of scamming over 100 victims, mainly in the US, and netting almost $7 million over the last decade. But romance scams are common enough, even if few reach the levels of organization and success. It's just another way that fraud is evolving with the times. This is the business of crime. In this episode, we're looking at the future of fraud, how sophisticated deception, increasingly complex scams, and the opportunities offered by new technology are being put to use, satisfying the same old greed and cruelty. What do we think of when we hear the word fraud? More than likely, there's a couple of competing impressions that come to mind. There's the gritty, everyday sort of financial crime, typified by the figure of the scam caller who peels off a few pin numbers from vulnerable senior citizens. Then perhaps there's the jolly and presumably always unsuccessful farce, the junk email promising a vast and unexpected $800 million inheritance from a recently deceased industrialist, yours in exchange for a relatively small tax, of course. We have all gotten those bogus emails from a certain Nigerian prince who promises to share his vast fortune as long as you give him your bank account number. Well, investigators say these schemes are now becoming more sophisticated and expensive, costing victims in this case millions of dollars. It's very easy and very convenient for offenders to put out blanket approaches to large groups of individuals, and they only need a, a small number of individuals to respond back, to engage with them in order to be successful. Or maybe it's the lone bedroom hacker, tinkering away in their darkened room, prodding at the Bank of America's online defenses to check for weak points. Like any cliche, there's at least a grain of fat in all three depictions, even if the world of fraud has become dramatically more sophisticated over the past decade or so. Adaptation is key. As defenses become stronger, scams increase in sophistication. Sophisticated malware, social engineering, brute force attacks. These are some of the contemporary tools noted by experts working in the field. Fraud is unsurprisingly big business. The US saw this as a priority. They are losing $4 billion annually to cybercrime. The FBI charging 80 people with trying to scam at least $46 million out of their victims by using fake online romance schemes or hacking businesses. It starts with something plausible. One 78-year-old victim was conned out of her entire life savings after clicking through on a link offering a deal on a discounted electric toothbrush. Another fell victim to a convincingly cloned website that mimicked the popular platform Money Supermarket. 
Kuwait has one of the lowest rates of reporting across all crime types. There is a high level of victim blaming that exists for fraud, and I think fraud is one of those offences where there is active participation on the part of the victim. So victims in many circumstances have willingly transferred money. Victims feel very ashamed. There was one case um, in, of which I'm aware where a victim in the US committed suicide. Successful scams require incompetent institutions. Take bank fraud, for example. Theft wouldn't be possible with adequate defences, and some of the world's biggest banks are often falling woefully short. Some try to address this by hiring dedicated staff. Others have blamed social media, where many of the scams are seeded, even if the biggest platforms don't seem particularly fussed with addressing concerns. Fraud isn't simply a matter for the old, the lovesick, or the technologically challenged. Warnings have even been raised about the security in the world of online video games. From Roblox to Fortnite, young players have been targeted around the world for bogus in-game purchases, or even for the recruitment of money mules, teenagers who agree for a third party to drop illicit funds into their account in exchange for a cut of the profits. And they said within three, four days, you'll be like four grand in your account and you can have five. It's slightly harder to feel sympathy for the victims of a major recent crypto fraud. The scam was based out in South Korea, where 470 investors pumped almost $2 million into a scheme that offered guaranteed returns using the Kimchi Premium, aka the gap in crypto prices between South Korean exchanges and others across the world. The student caught by Korean Customs Service had sent around 35 million US dollars to Hong Kong, for which they earned the kimchi premium of 1.7 million US dollars. Three people were arrested after complaints about the alleged fraud when the promised returns didn't materialize. Just the latest similar case in an unregulated boom industry rife with deception. By definition, fraud is hardly the most glamorous crime. If successful, it doesn't involve real-world violence or even a face to put to a name. It's anonymous and clandestine. It's also cowardly and exceptionally vicious in its own right. It relies on the very worst of human nature, the predatory taking advantage of the vulnerable, the cruel deceiving the lonely and desperate. It can center on an appeal to individual greed, like the get-rich-quick promises of the bogus crypto speculators in South Korea and beyond. It isn't a problem that is ever likely to go away. How do you eradicate cruelty and greed? As scams get increasingly sophisticated and scammers ever more technologically savvy, law enforcement and cybersecurity will continue to scrabble to keep up. For the Nigerian nationals caught running their romance scams out of South Africa, the outlook isn't particularly rosy. If guilty, they'll face 20 years in prison. It isn't clear exactly what that will do, to recover their victims' lost livelihoods. There will be many more victims. We are not close to seeing the end of the Black Axe.